the Pittsburgh Steelers have been suggested to trade Najee Harris before the deadline and make a move at running back that I think many have talked about, many have speculated could happen. There's way more that goes into this than just saying the Pittsburgh Steelers should trade Najee Harris. And, well, we should talk about it all. What's going on, everybody? I'm Noah Strackbine. Thank you for jumping on to Steelers To Go, your daily to-go cup of Pittsburgh Steelers news and analysis. Find us on YouTube.com slash All Steelers Talk and subscribe anywhere you get your podcast today. Let's talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers, Najee Harris, the trade deadline, and everything else that everybody wants to speculate about. USA Today dropped a list of everybody, every team, and one trade they should make before the deadline. And for the Pittsburgh Steelers, it was trade running back Najee Harris. Quote, this might seem a little surprising. It's not. But the Steelers might want to transition running back Jalen Warren into the starting spot and consider sending Harris to a team that could utilize that could better utilize his talents. Harris has hasn't quite been the thousand yard rusher we've gotten used to this season, and it'd be very easy to see a Super Bowl caliber team calling up the Steelers and seeing if Harris is available. Pittsburgh could probably get a second round pick in return and some team would get a proven running back in Harris to help a postseason run. There are so many parts to this little breakdown. For starters, the Pittsburgh Steelers, not a Super Bowl caliber team. I get that right now things are not great, and there are going to be a lot of people that say, no, they're not a Super Bowl caliber team. And I think I agree with you, but the Steelers don't. The Pittsburgh Steelers do not sit around right now and say, hey, you know what? We should get rid of Najee Harris. Why? Because we're not going to go on a run. We don't need him, but somebody else is going to, and those people will likely give us a call. I don't think that Omar Khan, Mike Tomlin, Art Rooney, or anybody else is sitting around going, yeah, we should give up Najee Harris to a competitor. Why? Because chances are we're not going to make it to the big game. I just don't see that being a possibility. I think if the Pittsburgh Steelers got the right phone call in the right situation, they'd have a conversation, but trying to just clean house because they aren't the Kansas City Chiefs, that's that's not going to happen. The second part of this is not being the 1,000-yard rusher that the Pittsburgh Steelers have seen. Well, Najee Harris is the 1,000-yard rusher that the Pittsburgh Steelers have seen, and he's done pretty much exactly what he's done every season prior to this. He's got 247 yards, and he actually averages 3.9 yards per carry and has averaged more than four yards per carry through more than one game this season. That is improvement. The Pittsburgh Steelers offense as a whole, not improving. That's the difference. Last year, you had to rely on Najee Harris and rely on the run game because you were transitioning at quarterback. You had no quality offensive play through the passing game. It was Najee Harris, ground and pound football. That's all we got, and that's how we're going to live and die. And the Steelers lived on it, and they lived on it well. The year before that, I don't know how he did it, but he got 1,000 yards, and it worked out. And in year three, if I had to guess, 247 yards heading into week seven, there's a pretty good shot that he gets right about there, if not eclipses it by the end of the season. The only difference is that now he's got a running back behind him that is earning more reps, that Jalen Warren is taking away from the ground and pound and the constant wear and tear of Najee Harris, and the Pittsburgh Steelers are able to evenly divide that up and give a little bit more workload to their backup and a little bit less workload to Najee Harris, who, I mean, that was the topic of conversation the last two years. How many times can the Pittsburgh Steelers give Najee Harris the football and expect him to last long term in the NFL. It's just not realistic. It's not going to happen. Okay, well they've changed that up. You obviously have to expect his numbers to decline. I don't think that it's he isn't the 1000-yard rusher that the Pittsburgh Steelers are used to seeing. I think it's now the Pittsburgh Steelers are making sure that he could last into the playoffs and that he is healthy by week 17, week 18 and that you have him for this year and probably next year. And maybe the year after that, if you decide to pick up his fifth-year option. But it's more schematics and more strategy than it is production. I don't think that Najee Harris is performing less than he's performed in the past. In fact, I think 
at times he's having better runs and more productive plays than he has the last two seasons. I just think that he's got Jalen Warren to talk about and Jalen Warren is going to take some, some snaps and he's going to utilize those snaps and the Pittsburgh Steelers should for good reason, give Jalen Warren snaps. Before we talk about Jalen Warren, let's talk about the compensation here. A second round pick, two trains of thought. One, I doubt it. I just don't think that that's a realistic trade expectation for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, don't get me wrong. You got a second round pick for Chase Claypool, and everybody likes to bring that up. Everybody. Well, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they got a second round pick for Chase Claypool. I agree. But Chase Claypool, very talented human being who just can't seem to put it together. He's got everything going on for him. He's a 6'3", pushing 6'4", wide receiver with 4'3", speed who could jump out the building. That's a guy that, I mean, I'm, I'm willing to take a chance on him. And Chicago, yeah, I get it. It didn't work out, but it didn't work out not because Chase Claypool isn't a talented wide receiver. It didn't work out because Chase Claypool just might not know how to play wide receiver, and he might not ever figure it out. But that's on Chase Claypool. That's not on his talent. Najee Harris is a ground and pound guy. Najee Harris is Najee Harris. We know exactly what you're going to get out of this guy. We know exactly the productivity you're going to get out of this guy. We know exactly the style and type of running back that he is. But a couple of things. Running backs in this league are not valued anymore. And if Jonathan Taylor was going for a first round pick and nobody was willing to give that up, nobody was even willing to talk about it. Well, Najee Harris isn't going for a second round pick. Sorry, he's not Jonathan Taylor, and he's not even close. And yeah, I think he's a good running back, but nobody's giving up a second round pick for a guy who's about to enter the final year of his rookie deal. And yeah, you could pick up a fifth year option, but he's a running back. So chances are you're just going to let him walk into free agency and you're going to look for the next one. So you're going to give up a second round pick for that. And who, and I really mean this, who in the Super Bowl era today is sitting around and saying, you want to know what is going to make our team just above the rest? a ground and pound running back. Nobody's thinking that the Miami dolphins aren't thinking that the New York jets aren't thinking that the Kansas city chiefs and the Philadelphia Eagles are not thinking that everybody's got their guy and all of their guys are explosive runners. Najee is not that type of guy. I don't know who that super bowl caliber team is that would be willing to give them a phone call and maybe try to make a trade. And if they did, and they offered up a second round pick, I mean, hey, you you take that immediately. Immediately. You don't even think about it. Najee Harris was like the 24th, 25th pick in the draft. That's pretty much a second round pick as it is. You take that pick. No questions asked. But it's not going to happen. And the Steelers are not going to make phone calls to try to make it happen. They're not looking to get rid of Najee Harris. I mean, Eddie Faulkner told me the other day that he has the best running back room in football and that the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to have to rely on both of those guys. If they're going to win games, the second half of the season. And I agree wholeheartedly Najee Harris and Jalen Warren are those guys that the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to rely on as they come back from the bye and move forward. That's how they're winning football games. Kenny Pickett isn't getting it done. Matt Canada isn't getting it done. It's about the offensive line. It is about the running game. Sorry, Omar Khan's not making phone calls. And if somebody's making a phone call and their first option is, hey, we'll give you a second round pick. Cool. Awesome. But the Chicago Bears don't happen twice. Lightning doesn't strike in the same place twice. And I think that Omar Khan's going to get a billion great deals done by the time he retires. I don't expect it to be back to back years. I just don't. Finally, let's talk about the Jalen Warren, Najee Harris situation. It is only talks it is only a topic of conversation outside of the locker room and outside of the organization that Jalen Warren will take over as the starting running back for Najee Harris at some point this season inside the locker room Jalen Warren is 100% happy and capable in the role that he is playing Najee Harris fully understands what he he is doing excuse me and the role that he plays and the offense fully understands the role that both of them play together doesn't mean that Jalen Warren deserves more snaps or doesn't deserve more snaps. No, he does deserve more snaps. He does deserve to be on the field probably more than Najee Harris at this point, just because I think he's a little bit more of a talented runner, has a little bit more of a spark, does a little bit more of everything else well. 
I just think that Jalen Warren is an all around really, really good running back. And at on any team in the NFL, he should compete for the starting job. But the Steelers are content with what they have and the roles that they play. And they're not looking to get rid of one of them so that Jalen Warren touches the rock 400 times this season. They're looking to have both of them so that neither of them touch the rock 400 times this season. And if they get an opportunity to compete in the postseason, they fully understand those two will be the way that they can win games. They're not going to rely on Kenny Pickett. They're not going to rely on the passing game. They're not going to rely on George Pickens or Pat Frymuth or Deontay Johnson or Allen Robinson or any of the other ones. They're going to hand the ball to Jalen Warren. They're going to hand the ball to Najee Harris, and they're going to try to beat teams like the Buffalo Bills and the Cincinnati Bengals and the Baltimore Ravens and the Kansas City Chiefs and the Miami Dolphins. That's what they're going to do. And they fully understand that. They believe they're a playoff team. They believe they're a Super Bowl caliber team. They believe that they are 3-2 and two and 2-0 two and oh in the AFC North, and that is a great spot to be. They're not trading a running back. I mean, maybe they are but somebody's got to call them. They're not looking to make this trade. They're not looking to change things up in the backfield. They're not looking to get rid of Najee Harris. Again, obviously teams could call and knock your socks off with a trade offer. That happens all the time. But I would not anticipate the Pittsburgh Steelers making phone calls to try to move on from Najee Harris.